we could have a debate about what the most interesting cell in the human body is. But I think easily the neuron would make the top five. And if not just because the cell itself is interesting, the fact that it essentially makes up our brain and our nervous system and is responsible for the thoughts and our feelings and, and, and maybe for all of our sentience, I think uh, would easily make it the top one or two cells. So what I want to do is first just show you what a neuron looks like. And of course, this is kind of the perfect example. This isn't what all neurons look like. And then we're going to talk a little bit about how it performs it fu its function, which is essentially communication, essentially a, a transmitting signals across its lengths, depending on the signals it receives. So if I were to draw a neuron, let me pick a better color. So let me draw I'm make my brush size a little bit thinner. So let's say I have a neuron. It looks something like this. So in the middle, you have your soma. And then from the soma, so let me draw the nucleus. Draw my try my best. So this is a nucleus, just like any cell's nucleus. And then the soma is considered the body of the neuron. And then the neuron has these little things sticking out from it that keep branching off, that keep branching off. Maybe they look something like this. I don't want to spend too much time just drawing the neuron, but you've probably seen drawings like this before. And these branches off of the soma of the neuron, off of its body, these are called a dendrite, dendrites. Dendrites. And they can keep splitting off like that. I want to do a fairly reasonable drawing, so I'll spend a little time doing that. The one last dendrite, just like that. So these right here, these are dendrites. And these tend to be, and nothing is always the case in biology, sometimes uh, different parts of different cells perform other functions. But these tend to be where the neuron receives its signal. And we'll talk more about what it means to uh, receive and transmit a signal in this video and probably in the next few. So this is where it receives the signal. And then, so this is the dendrite. This right here is the soma. Soma means body. This is the body of the neuron. And then we have. And then we have kind of a, you can almost view it as a tail of, of the neuron. It's called the axon. The axon, it, a neuron could be you know, a reasonably normal sized cell, although there is a huge range. But the axons can be quite long. They could be short. Sometimes in the brain, you might have very small axons. But you might have axons that go down the spinal column or that go along one of your limbs. Or you know, if we're talking about a dinosaur, go along one of a dinosaur's limbs. So the axon can actually stretch several feet. Not all neurons' axons are several feet, but they could be. And this is really where a lot of the, uh, the distance of the signal gets traveled. So let me draw. The axon. So the axon will look something like this. And at the end, it ends at the axon terminal, where it can connect to other dendrites or maybe to other types of tissue or muscle if the point of this neuron is to tell a muscle to do something. So at the end of the axon, you have the axon terminal right there. Do my best to draw it. It's like that. Let me label it. So this is the axon. This is the axon terminal. Terminal. And you'll sometimes hear the word, the point at which the soma, or the body of the neuron, connects to the axon is often referred to as the axon hillock. Or maybe you can kind of view it as kind of a lump. It starts to form the axon. So it's the axon hillock. And then we're going to talk about, actually, I think there's a C there. We're going to talk about how, how the impulses uh, travel. And a, a huge part in what allows them to travel efficiently, efficiently are these insulating cells around the axon. These insulating ce cells around the axon. We're going to talk about this in detail and how they actually work. But it's good just to have the anatomical structure first. So these are called Schwann cells. Schwann cells. And they're covering. They make up the myelin sheath. So this covering, this insulation at different intervals around the axon, this is called the myelin sheath. So Schwann cells make up the myelin sheath. I'll do one more just like that. So I'll say Schwann cells or myelin, myelin sheath. And then these little spaces between the myelin sheet, just so we have all of the terminology from, uh, so we know the entire anatomy of the neuron. These are called the nodes of Ranvier. Nodes of Ranvier. 
I guess they're named after Ranveer. Maybe he was the guy who looked and saw they have these little these little slots here where you don't have myelin sheets. So these are the nodes of Ranveer. So the general idea, as I mentioned, is that you get a signal here, and we're going to talk more about what the signal means. And then that signal gets trans actually the signals can be summed. So you might have one little signal right there, another signal right there, and then you'll have a maybe a larger signal there and there. And that the combined effects of these signals get summed up and they travel to the hillock, and if they're large enough, if they're large enough, they're going to trigger an action potential on the axon, which will cause a signal to travel down the balance of the axon. And then over here, it might be connected via synapses, synapses to other dendrites or muscles. And we'll talk more about synapses. And those might help trigger other things. And so you're saying, well, what's triggering these things here? Well, this could be the terminal end of other neurons axes, uh, sorry, axons, like in the brain. They could be this could be some type of sensory neuron. This could be on a taste bud someplace. So when you know a salt molecule somehow can trigger it, uh, or or a sugar molecule, or this might be some type of stretch sensor. It could be a whole bunch of different things. And we'll talk more about the different types of